Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta and on this video I'm gonna compare Bugera PS1 Power Soak and Sir Reactive Load slash IR. Let's do a brief overview of these two devices. I've been using this Sir Reactive Load IR long time and it's absolutely fantastic. So what do we have here? There's IR select, so you can download 16 IRs impulse responses here and with this you select them. Then there's headphones level, so you can connect your headphones here and play in complete silence with your tube amp hood into this and then here you dial the headphone level. There's also auxiliary in, you can you know, connect your computer, mobile phone or whatever and jam with your favorite albums or track backing tracks with just your headphones and your tube amp. And then there's DI level. With this you control the level that the device is sending out to your audio interface, for example. And then there's a plus 6, de not six de decibel notch and zero decibel notch. I use always that on the zero and then there's high cut on off. I use it always off because uh, I think the high cut cuts a little bit too much the sound so it becomes kind of dull. Okay, what we have back input from amp so you connect your amplifiers output from speaker out to here. This only takes 8 ohm slash 100 watt. But you can use 5150 with this, at least according to a couple of my friends who use that amp. That's a 120 watt amp, but you hardly turn the master full ever. So you can use 5150 safely if you don't crank the amp on full level, but you know, 5150 sounds the best, I think, when the master isn't above 5. And then there's throughout, so you can connect your speakers here. This isn't a power soak, so you can't lower the level that goes into speaker. So if you have your amp cranked and you connect your speaker here, it will be loud as you know. And then there's uh, two outputs unfiltered, which sends the direct signal from the amp to your audio interface without an impulse response. So you can add impulse, impulse response later. And then there's IR out, which sends the impulse response, aka you know, your mic cabinet sound out. You can use both at the same time if you want. Okay, then this one. What we have here is a soak. So this main purpose is if you want to crank your amp you and still play at bedroom levels. So this goes between your amplifiers speaker out and your cabinets speaker in. And with this you lower the volume so you can crank your tube amp master so that the tubes are breathing, working, the amps are growling and then you dial your desired volume levels with this. So it goes from basically completely silenced to when it's like 100 here then it re still reduces the levels like 50%. And then there's line out switch because you can 
have a direct line out like what you have here. And then there's a emulated, like cabinet emulated output. That's not very good. It's really dull. So I didn't find any use of that. Okay, you could probably EQ it like the heck out of it to get it, but yeah. And then you have three different inputs, 4, 8 and 16 ohms. You know, you can use these to match your amplifiers, speaker out ohms. And then speaker out to, you know, your cabinet. I did a video just recently where I played with uh, my 800 and into the cabinet and it sounded pretty good. The DI sound was okay and I stated that you can't use this alone, so you have to have a cabinet. I did some research and there's a bit confusing info on, on the internet. Some reviews, sites, claims that this isn't allowed, so you always have to have a cabinet. And then on uh, this device's manual, it says that uh, remember always to use a load with cheap amplifier. And it's written like, with so PS1 and cabinet or cabinet. So there's a room for interpretation. But uh, yeah, but when you look inside of it, this there's hardly anything going on, not any copper things or anything. And this has a, like a lot of stuff, you know, I'm not an electrician, but this weighs a lot more. And when you play with this, this, you know, you feel the rumble, but this doesn't make any noise. So I wouldn't <laughs> try to use this with tube amp without a cabinet. So how this sounds? Well, what I did here, we're gonna go into into the sounds and soon. But so this is was a little bit complicated. So my signal chain, I used my E2 Eclipse with EMG 81, 85 pickups, standard C tuning. Then cable without any pedals, anything into the Marshall JZM 2000 TSL. And I used the clean channel and the lead channel. Then what I did, I uh, hooked one output from the amp to this and one speaker output to this. So I have this going on simultaneously. And that way I was able to securely disconnect the cabinet. So I did, I played clips when the cabinet was hooked and when it wasn't. And well, this is cheap and Unfortunately, in the recording situation, you can clearly say it is, because when the cabinet wasn't on, so I was basically using this reactive load as a dummy load, because I don't trust that this can handle the power without a cabinet. So when this was zero, this line control worked like it should be. When this was opened a little bit, nothing happened really except between 8 and 10. And the more you open this, so the more, the louder the signal came from the cabinet, the more 
effective this became. Very strange. And it also affected the sound when the cabinet was hooked and when this was on and this, the direct sound was like a little bit darker and different. But when this was zero, there was no cabinet. I was using this. This was hooked on the other cab out as a dummy load. Then this worked like it should, and it sound and the DI sound was better. <laughs> so let's go now to the computer where I pre-recorded tracks and you hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are on the screen. As you can see, I have here Sir direct out with no impulse response. Then I have a Sir direct out with impulse response and I'm using the Jens Bugren's Sound of God EQ2. Then I have a Sir impulse response out and I had a same IR here. Then I have the Bugera, no cabinet, no IR, so just the direct sound. Then I have the Bugera, the cabinet connected and the, the soak was around 7, 8, so it was just a bit open and no impulse response. Then I have a impulse response here and no cabinet. And then lastly I had a impulse response here, so the direct sound out, impulse response here and with the cabinet connected, because like I said this worked really strangely when the cabinet was connected. All right, so let's listen. So first TSL, clean channel, just a direct out signal with no impulse responses. Okay, then Bugera. No cabinet connected because this was acting as a dummy load. Sounds like this. As you can hear, they sound really close. Maybe the sir is a little bit more open. I don't know. When I listened with headphones, the, the sir was a slightly more open, natural. Okay, then what I have here is Bugera and the cabinet was connected and a little bit open and this didn't really do much for the signal. So I've, I've matched the levels with the, with the, my Focusrite audio interface where both of these went. Okay, so Bugera, cabinet connected, no impulse response. Okay, then no cabinet, no impulse response.
if you listen with the headphones, you, when the cabinet was connected, the sound was like a little bit, little bit darker and had a little bit more low end. No idea why, because this is supposed to be a direct line out, and so this, if the cabinet is connected or not, shouldn't affect, but it does. <laughs> All right, then let's listen, uh, sir, a direct out with the impulse response, the sound of God, EQ2. Okay, then let's listen Bugera with the same impulse response, Son of God EQ2. Okay, then let's listen Bugera with the same impulse response and no cabinet connected. As you hear again, when the impulse response is on, when the cabinet is connected, it sounds a little bit darker. Okay, now let's move to the lead channel. Again, guitar cable lead channel. And sir, direct out, no impulse responses. Okay, then let's listen Bugera with no cabinet connected, no impulse responses. Now it sounds like a bit more harsh. Again, I think the, the sir sounds more healthy. <laughs> so now let's use sir direct out and impulse response added afterwards. It's the same sound of God, EQ2. Sounds like this. Okay, then let's use Bugera with the same impulse response and no cabinet connected to this. And then let's listen same clip but when the cabinet was connected. And then I just want to compare Sir different Output. So this is the direct out and the impulse response added afterwards. This is the sir with the impulse response and from the IR out so, so that you record the impulse response. There's nothing. As you can see from the waveform it looks a lot like, you know, 
real cabinet mic'd would look like. So you can actually see the waveforms, because this is just because it's direct. So it's just and there's distortion. With clean it looks like this. But so first let's listen the IR here. Then direct and IR afterwards. I don't know if you can hear it, but when I listen with headphones, this sounds more realistic, more better. There's more nuances, like the waveform shows that too. So sometimes when I record demos or, or try to or find the best IR from the Jens Bulgren pack for a certain recording, I usually use the direct out and then, that's, then just go through the IERs. And then when I've found the one that I use, which basically all the time it's either the Sound of God EQ2 or Greasybeard EQ1. So, and then when I found the IR, then I use the IR out and play with that IR here, because I think it sounds a little bit more realistic. And because this is a reactive load, then the amp reacts to this device when the IR is on. So similar, same way that it, it would react with the real cabinet. Hopefully this made some sense to you, because I got a lot of questions after my previous video about the Bugera and I tried to answer them all on this video. I would use this only when I want to play with my amp and with my cabinet, just to tame down the volume. The line-out direct sound, it worked so strangely, you know, depending whether this was connected to a cabinet or not. It sounds surprisingly close to the Surge direct sound, but it's not quite as good. The primary purpose of this, in my opinion, is so that you just, you know, can enjoy playing and, and uh, not really for recording. Whether this one, which is a lot heavier, there's a lot more stuff in really well designed. This is made for professional recording. I've recorded albums with this. I've tried many reactive loads, IR loaders, and in my experience this is the most realistic. The amp behaves, it feels really like playing with a real cabinet. Okay, I have no idea how long this has been, but uh, I really wanted to do this. There's been so much different information in the internet about the, the power soak. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. And if you <laughs> still have questions, which I believe you do, because I'm pretty sure there was something I forgot to say or try out or whatever, please put them in the comments below. I'll try to answer or maybe I need to do a third video about the subject. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you like, you know, thumbs up, subscribe and so on. Until next time, see you, bye.